What is up everyone, Mark here. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be giving a concert review for Monoskin, the Loud Kids tour which I saw in New York City last night. So this video is probably going to come out a day or two after I actually saw the concert. They were in New York on Friday, December 2nd, and also Saturday, December 3rd. This is going to be similar to my Panic at the Disco concert review. At the end of the video, I will be rating the concert out of 10 based on my pros and cons, and will be giving my final thoughts. Before we get into my first pro, comment right now where you know Monoskin from. Whether that's Eurovision, TikTok, wherever. I'm really curious to know, and in in fact, when I was actually online for the concert, I was really considering interviewing people to ask them the same question. I know the answer would probably be TikTok, but I still really want to know. And with that, let's jump into my first pro. And that is the level of audience engagement. So Monoskin had a really great rapport with their audience. I think they had a great stage presence. One thing I thought was really cool was Damiano going into the crowd with Thomas on his back and singing the whole time. I don't know how he was able to do that. It was quite impressive. And since I was in the balcony, it took me a minute to even realize that was Damiano. I thought it was just some random crew member at first. And it was really cool that he was going into the crowd too just because in the past two years we haven't seen too much of that especially at big concert events we haven't really seen too many big concert events in general in the past two years so it was really nice to actually see something like that again and another thing that i liked was the fact that towards the end of the concert damiano brought up a bunch of fans on stage pretty much anyone who was in the front row one girl there was really shy and damiano just hugged her and everything and i thought that was really cute it was kind of funny seeing everyone on stage too because some people got really a little bit too excited being up there i think i saw a couple people trying to grab victoria's guitar and she kind of had to run away from them um, but otherwise it was super cool to say that and I hope they all had a great time because that was like a once in a lifetime opportunity kind of made me wish that I was in the pit so I could actually experience all of that up close but still it was really cool seeing from the balcony and also just getting to be in the same room as all that energy and all that action happening so with that let's move on to my first con so I think my only con for this concert and it's a really minor minor con but it is something I just wanted to bring up is actually the set list the set list for me is overall pretty good I really wish that there would have been a few more Italian songs but I also understand that you know they're in New York and they don't want to alienate their English-speaking audience. They don't want to be singing all in Italian or too much in Italian so that people that only speak English can't sing along. So I understand that. I just wish that more songs from maybe some of their older albums, or especially from El Ballo de la Vita, which was from way back in 2018, could have been included on the set list. The only song that they actually had from the album was Close to the Top, which is a great song, but I really wish they would have had other songs, maybe like Torna a Casa, which is one of my favorite Monaskin songs of all time, and La Otra Dimensione, which I like a lot too, but that's okay. I mean, I did a mind it so much. It's more of a thing that I wish they would have added than a criticism, because honestly, it's hard to find critiques for this concert. It was so amazing and just so unique that it's hard to really say, oh, I didn't like this, or this is a nitpick here and there, because I think Monoskin just does their own thing and they do it really well. So again, the only thing that I really kind of have to nitpick is just the lack of some of their older songs, and especially songs from that one album. But again, not a huge deal. Let's move on to one of my other pros. And believe me, there are way more pros than cons here. I think this will actually be pros from here on out, because this concert was incredible but with that, let's move on to my next pro. So my next pro is actually giving all the band members time to shine. One thing I was worried about going into this concert was that it would be all about Damiano and not about Thomas, Victoria, or Ethan. Thankfully, I had no reason to be worried. All the band members got time to shine, and there were many parts where Damiano was almost entirely out of the picture. Damiano definitely gets a lot of attention from the Monoskin fandom for good reason. I mean, Damiano is amazing. But I think it's really important to remember that it's not just a one-man band. Victoria, Thomas, and Ethan are all incredibly talented and definitely deserve a lot of recognition. Thankfully, this concert gave that to them. There were many guitar solos in this concert, many drum solos too. One good example, of course, is when Thomas was riding on Damiano's back, and he basically got almost all the spotlight when he was in the crowd because, well, for me at least, in the balcony, Thomas was really all I could see. I could just barely see Damiano just below him, lifting him up on his shoulders, but Thomas really got the spotlight there. And also, right before they went into The Loneliest, when after they had that kind of trick ending, Thomas was the only person on stage, and they had the spotlight just on him, and he did a guitar solo, and really showcased his talents right there. There was also another part where Victoria and Thomas were doing a guitar solo together, right in front of Ethan, who was doing a drum solo. So yeah, overall, I really give this concert props for showcasing every single member of the band and all their talents, and for not just being all about Damiano. I really appreciated that, and really made me like this concert so much more, again, because it just didn't feel like a one-man band. That's another big pro for me, and with that, let's move on to my next pro. The fact that Monoskin decided to add new guitar riffs and new instrumentals to the beginnings, middles, and ends of their songs. I thought this was really cool, and yes, some bands do do this, but the way Monoskin implemented this in their songs was super unique. Where some songs might have, you know, a little bit of an introduction, a little bit of an outro, Monoskin pretty much transformed some of their songs for the better. Some of these songs, like The Loneliest, have very extensive intros, and these intros are all instrumental, and they give great opportunities for Victoria, Ethan, and Thomas to shine. And to be honest, it made the concert that much more unpredictable. Since I had to look at set lists, I usually don't know what song is going to come next, right? So we have these extensive instrumental 
intros, these great guitar riffs, these great drum solos, everything. And I don't know where that's leading. And also once the song ends, I don't know if the outro is going to go straight into another song or what they're going to do. And on some of the other songs, they would have an instrumental break in the middle, which really kept me on my toes, kept me very engaged. I really enjoyed that aspect of the concert. It just made it so much more unpredictable, so much more exciting, and just so much more memorable to me. So my last pro and one of my favorite parts of this concert is right before the song Levidi Sui Gumiti, Damiano said this is our last song. So everyone was like, okay, this is it, right? This is the last song. He sang the song, the song was great, the song ended, and we were all like, okay, it's time to go home. Monosuke left the stage, but the lights were still off. So all of us were kind of looking around, people were like whispering, and we were all confused. My friends and I were really confused. We were like, should we go? I was ready to pick up my jacket and leave, but then someone came on stage and everyone was cheering and screaming, but it was just a member of the crew. Then we were like, okay, so is the concert really over then? And we sit there and some people actually did start getting up and leaving. But then as we sat there a couple minutes in, Thomas ran on stage. Next thing you know, we're back in it. <laughs> Thomas performed a guitar solo as an intro to The Loneliest. And it was also a really long guitar solo, which I really appreciated. It really gave us time to see Thomas as an artist, to hear how talented he is with the guitar. And then of course, Damiano, Victoria, and Ethan came on stage, leading straight into The Loneliest. And after that, there was even a reprise of I Wanna Be Your to wrap up the concert and just end off the night. They did this thing during I Wanna Be Your where they had you get on your knees and then you would jump to the guitar solo pretty much. And it was just so fun to experience that song for a second time. It was really cool. I did not expect them A, to have a fake ending or B, to do a reprise of I Wanna Be Your Keep in mind, I don't look at the set list before concerts because I wanna be surprised. So that ending was a huge surprise for me. I love the way they were able to build suspense and the way they pulled us straight back in the second Thomas came on stage. Really cool part of the concert. Definitely one of my favorite pros of this concert because other bands that I've seen other concerts I've been to have not done that. Maybe that's the thing for rock concerts. Maybe that's common there. This actually was my first rock concert, so I really did not know what to expect, and I was definitely not ready to be bamboozled by this trick ending. It really was just a great end to the night. So yeah, a really big pro for me, and definitely one thing that really made me appreciate and admire these performances and this concert. That is kind of my final pro for this concert. I think this concert had a lot of really great elements. There were a lot of great things they did, a lot of tricks they pulled, like the trick ending, to really keep me in suspense, keep me engaged. All around, this is one of the best concerts I think I've been to, and I don't really like to compare concerts to each other because every concert is different, especially across genres. Like my Panic at the Disco concert was very different to this concert. So keep in mind my ranking doesn't mean this is better than another concert that I went to. Maybe I enjoyed this concert a bit more than a lot of others, but that doesn't mean the other concerts I went to are bad or worse in any way. So for me, this concert overall gets a 9.5 out of 10. I was gonna give this a 10 out of 10. I think the only thing is just like, you know, I would have liked some more songs on some of their older albums or some more songs from El Ballo de la Vita, but otherwise, this is one of the most impressive concerts I think I've been to. I think all the pros far outweigh my minor con. I really don't have any major criticisms for this concert at all. I think they really are experts at their craft. I mean, they really know rock and roll. I think they have a great respect for the genre, for the history of the genre, paying homage to other artists. They even did a cover of Alana Del Rey song, which I thought was really cool. Another surprise for me. And also performing their cover of I Wanna Be Your Dog. Again, I think that they have such a great respect for the genre, for the artists that came before them, and it really makes me admire this band and their performances that much more. This concert really did mean a lot to me just because I have been a fan of Monoskin for a pretty long time. I discovered Monoskin all the way back in 2021, and that was in March of 2021. So it's been almost two years at this point, and it feels like I've followed this band for even longer. I discovered Monoskin after they won San Remo 2021 last year, and if you don't know, that's the Italian song contest that actually inspired the creation of Eurovision, and the winner of San Remo gets to go to Eurovision to represent Italy. Monoskin won last year, and at first, I wasn't too sure what to think about them. I saw their performance, thought it was pretty good, but I had also been rooting for other songs to win San Remo, so I wasn't too keen on the band at first. After a while, once we had a few songs in for Eurovision 2021, I did go back and listen to all the songs again. Of course, ZD Abwani was one of those songs. And I ended up listening to that song again and again and again, and I really did fall in love with it. Italian rock was something I didn't know I needed, and Monoskin provided just that. They became one of my favorite bands, just in general, and even though they were not my winners for Eurovision, I still love them a lot, and I still was rooting for them to do really well. I think they were in my second place in 2021, if I'm not mistaken, and when they won, I was very happy for them. Again, even even though they were not my winners that year, I was very happy for them and I thought it was a very well-deserved win. They had some of the best staging of all the songs there, or of any Eurovision song just in general, and really deserved to get the top spot. And at the time, Monoskin was just a band that people knew in Europe, but mostly in Italy. Eurovision winners really didn't go super viral for the most part. I mean, Duncan Lawrence did great. His song Arcade has definitely gone viral, and I hear it a lot on TikTok even now. But most Eurovision winners, you know, they mostly become famous in Europe and don't usually reach the same stardom as ABBA or Celine Dion did. 
That was not the case for Monoskin, however. They became a global sensation practically overnight, and it really just astounded me how much love they were getting from overseas in the United States, and I think music is really a universal language, and it really was amazing how Monoskin was able to bring so many different kinds of people together, and that's super important and super meaningful to me, especially after the last two years. And to be honest, it's just so astounding to see Monoskin's growth and the growth of their audience. Sitting on the balcony, watching from above, I just couldn't help but feel almost overwhelmed by a sense of just how proud I am for this band and for how far they've come. Again, I remember all the way back from their San Remo days, where they were pretty much unknown outside of Italy, to now, where they're global sensations. Amazing to see how far they've come and, you know, really warms my heart, to be honest. But not to get too sappy, but I really am proud of this band. I'm proud of every single one of them. And it really is great to see how far they've come from their San Remo and their Eurovision days to now. So with that, that has been my review of the Monoskin concert. Please let me know what you think down below. If you agree, disagree with my comments. Let me know if you saw Monoskin, if so, where, and what did you think? So yeah, with that, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace. Thank you.